Hey everyone, welcome back, ready for another deep dive. Today we're gonna to tackle something that honestly might sound a bit dry, PDO. We've got this web page. it's a, uh, well, it's not much to look at, gotta be honest. I've seen prettier code comments. Right, but looks can be deceiving because this thing is packed with insights, especially if you're knee deep in PHP and databases all day. Absolutely, no fancy graphics, but it gets straight to the point, which I appreciate. It's all about getting a solid practical grasp on PDO. And it jumps right in, doesn't it? Calls PDO an abstract layer for talking to databases. And I thought to myself, okay, hold on. For those of us who don't speak fluent computer science, mm -hmm. What's that actually mean for like the code we're writing? Good question. Think of it like, imagine you're building a website, right? Users got to log in. You don't want to rewrite that whole login system just because you switched from say MySQL over to PostgreSQL, yeah. PDO is like that middleman lets you use those same basic PHP commands to talk to, get this, a dozen different database types. So it's like having one set of keys, but it can open the doors to all these different database systems. Exactly. You got it. Makes your code way more portable, saves you a ton of headaches down the line. Remember that time you pulled an all-nighter rewriting code just to connect to a different database? Yeah, PDO. PDO could have saved you there. Oh, I've had nights like that. Not fun. Mm -hmm. Now, the source also mentioned connection strings. What are those? Why should we even care? Connection strings. Think of them like phone numbers, but for your databases. They tell your PHP code how to find the right database and connect to it. And the beauty of PDO, it standardizes those connection strings. So even if the actual details are different, like the database name or the password, the way I write that connection string of the code, that stays consistent. You got it. Consistent every single time. So, for example, a MySQL connection string might look a little something like this. MySQL.host localhost, DB name, my database, see how it lays it all out. Type of database, server address, database name, all nice and tidy. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's it's like having a universal format for addresses, even if the streets and house numbers are all different. Makes it way easier to find your way around. Exactly. You're getting it. And that consistency, that's a big part of what makes PDO so powerful, so efficient. It takes care of all those nitty-gritty details of connecting to different databases so you can focus on the good stuff, the logic of your application. It's like having a personal assistant who handles all the paperwork for you so you can just focus on the big picture, the important stuff. Okay, so PDO makes connecting to databases easier, more efficient. But this source, it dives even deeper than that, right? It's talking about security benefits, especially when it comes to these, uh, what they call them, SQL injection attacks. And that sounds kind of scary, if I'm being yeah. honest. Yeah, no, it's definitely something to watch out for, for sure. But the good news is PDO, it's got our backs. See, SQL injection, it's basically a way for, well, for hackers to sneak in malicious code into your database queries. So imagine like someone enters this into, say, a login form, username, Drop table users. Okay, I'm no hacker, but that just looks wrong. Exactly. That right there, that little bit of code, that could actually delete your entire user table if you're not careful. Um, thank you. Yeah, no kidding. But that's where PDO steps in with these things called prepared statements, helps prevent those attacks. Right, the source mentioned those prepared statements, they're like, what, like security guards for your database? Uh -huh. Kind of. Think of it like this. Sending a postcard, right? Out in the open, anyone can read it. Versus a sealed letter. Contents are protected. PDO's prepared statements, they're like sealing your queries. They separate your actual data from the command itself. So even if a hacker like d tries to sneak in some bad code, it just gets treated as data, not an actual command that gets wrong. Exactly. You got it. Like trying to change the address on a sealed letter, it's not going to work, right? That letter's going where it was addressed to. PDO makes sure the database it only sees the data it's supposed to see. Keeps your application safe from those uh, those sneaky attacks. Okay, that's that's reassuring, actually. But there was also something about named placeholders. Ooh. What's the advantage of those? <laughs> named placeholders. These make your code so much easier to read, easier to maintain in the long run. Remember how those connection strings had those clear labels like host and DB name? It's like that. Instead of just question marks as placeholders, you give them names, actual names that make sense. So instead, like, UP date users set email where id, id, is like. It'd be more like UP users set email dot new email where it well, stuck easier it. to understand what's going on wouldn't you say plus if you need to change things up later or rearrange your query you don't have to keep track of which question mark goes with which value it's all right there clear as day that's got to be a lifesaver especially when you're dealing with those big complex queries with tons of variables it's like it's like labeling your moving boxes clearly instead of just scribbling like stuff 
on every single one. This is really making me rethink like my whole approach to databases, you know. And speaking of practical stuff, I noticed the source gets into things like CR root operations, even working with images and binary data. What's up with that? Right. So CRD, that's just a fancy way of saying create, read, update, delete, all those basic actions you do with data in a database. And this source, it really breaks down how PDO handles all of that, it gives you clear examples and everything. And it even gets into using PDO's blob data type for like images and multimedia. So instead of having to create some clunky workaround, I can work with images directly in the database. You got it. PDO makes it, surprisingly, pretty straightforward. Store images, audio files, even videos right there in your database. No problem. Wow, okay. That is powerful. It's like having a Swiss Army knife for database stuff. PDO just handles it all. It really does, yeah. And what I find really interesting is that PDO, it's not just about the tools, right? It's like it encourages a certain way of thinking, a philosophy almost. You end up... Yeah, no, I get that. It's like the difference between forcing a solution and having things just click into place naturally. Exactly. And that elegance, it pays off big time because then your code's easier to maintain, easier to debug, and you can adapt it as your project grows. This whole deep dive has honestly been a real eye-opener for me. I feel like I went from... Like, what is PDO? To actually understanding what it can do, how versatile it is. And hopefully it sparks some curiosity. Always more to learn. For sure. But before we wrap up, I got to ask, this has been bugging me. If PDO is so great, why isn't everybody using it? Ah, the million dollar question. Well, like anything in tech, there are always trade-offs, right? Sometimes a different approach, it just makes more sense for a specific project, or maybe a team is stuck with older code that doesn't play nice with PDO. So it's not like a magic bullet, but it's a powerful tool to have for mm -hmm. sure. And knowing how it works, what it's good at, even its limitations, that helps you make better decisions about you know your tech stack. Absolutely, we've got a solid foundation now, but the learning never stops, right? Software development is always changing, always something new to explore. Couldn't agree more. Big thanks to you, as always, for guiding us through this deep dive. It's been great. And to our listeners, thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed this exploration of PDO. Until next time, happy coding.